What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Big Dog's Gotta Eat. As always, it's your boy, Nicholas. I know it's Monday. I know I don't usually put out videos on Monday, but you know what? We had a good Sunday. We had a lot of fun. Honestly, I didn't even watch that much football. I went out to brunch, then I was hopping around my town, just, you know, hanging out with friends and whatnot, but I woke up super early, ready to roll, in a good mood, ready to work. I went through all the Road War blurbs today just to kind of get a recap of everything that happened in the fantasy football world and as i did it i was taking notes on everything and i figured i would just share my notes it's a brief glimpse into what i read what i thought my takeaways from the day all that kind of stuff you know because a lot of people want me to put out more videos i only do the video on thursday which is like the weekly kind of video and then i do the fantasy football advice podcast on thursday nights which i missed last week and the other stuff is just my uh, my blog post. If you're not subscribed to my news my newsletter, make sure you go to my website, bdgeat.com. Scroll down on the homepage, put your info in on the bottom, and I will send you out every Tuesday when I drop my waiver wire sheet and my murky running back situation sheet as well. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you're following me on Twitter, go follow me on the gram as well, and let's get into some week seven recap action. So, I'm just gonna kinda read through my notes here. And by the way, a few people have DM'd me about this. If you're not getting my emails, you're on the subscriber list, make sure you check your spam folder. I don't know why, man, but they think my shit is spam. Maybe they think it's too good to be true, what I'm giving you guys. That's fake news, I'm giving you the facts. So make sure you check your spam folder before you uh, hit me up and say you didn't get it. But I have had some problems with people that don't get it, so if that's still the case, just make sure it's in your like favorites or bookmarks or whatever. Um, anyways, moving on to the info. Firstly, we had to get into the Sunday Night Football matchup with my boys. Falcons took another L from the Pats. I don't know how much more damage they could do to my heart without me. I don't want to say anything I'm going to regret on this video, so we're just going to go into the numbers. I'm just, you know, I was high on Deion Lewis. He He's still the back to own in this backfield, in my opinion, right? He went 13 for 76. Led the team in carries, he led the team in snaps. He got plenty of uh, play time, right? And he's getting plenty of opportunity. They gave him the ball inside the five, inside the 10. They were letting him run down there. They gave Gillisley a handoff down there, which I, you know, I thought it was a wrong move by them, but it just goes to show you that he's still like up there. He's still the guy for them. And I think that's even with Rex Burkhead back, who had, I think, five or six carries. Deion Lewis has major upside for me. It's gonna, you know, there's definitely a clear RBBC there going on in New England, but I like what I've seen uh, uh, from Lewis, and he's definitely someone to hold right now. I'm not sure I'm comfortable really starting him yet, but he should continue to see, um, you know, 12 to 15 touches, which is great. And he finally got a, a damn catch yesterday. I don't know why they're not utilizing him in the pass game. I, he's electric in the open field. He's like he's like LaShawn McCoy catching the ball out of the backfield, but they still prefer James White for some reason or another. Um, I don't know. Lewis is up to 5.3 yards per carry on the year, 3.9 yards after contact. Um, and among guys that have 40 carries or more, which is 42 different running backs, he is uh, fifth in yards per carry and I think second overall in yards after contact and tackles eluded per attempt. So Lewis is getting it done on an efficiency basis. LeGarrette Blunt is actually the only running back that is ahead of him in both those categories. Definitely a must hold, definitely major upside for Deion Lewis. Saw another terrible game from Artavis Bryant. He has more than three catches just once in the seven games he's hit 50 receiving yards just once this year and he has one touchdown he hasn't scored since week two uh the offense is just not looking towards him they're not desi designing plays for him they're obviously not relying on big ben they are finally i know as much hate as they got for that jacksonville game where they didn't run the ball Le'Veon bell Le'Veon bell has a ridiculous amount of work in the last few games where was it this writing is so small i can't even read my notes um yeah they're just strict strictly leaning on Le'Veon bell he has 117 carries over the last four weeks that's over 29 carries a game that's not even including his total touches it's not including targets or receptions that's just straight up carries 29.25 carries a game over their last four games which is 23 more than the next running back over that last four weeks and that's jordan howard even after a 35 carry game last week and then Le'Veon Bell actually had a 35 carry game yesterday um so after that slow start Le'Veon Bell is sitting right now at running back three in fantasy behind Kareem Hunt and Todd Gurley uh, Le'Veon Bell is just you know if I had to if we started a fantasy football draft right now at this point in the season Bell he was my number one overall pick going into the season and he would absolutely still be my number one overall pick 
right now. Actually, that's a great idea. You know what I'm, I think I'm going to do next week, since week eight is halfway through the fantasy season. That's a great video idea. I'm going to do a mock draft, a first round mock draft, if the season started after next week. So after week eight, I'm going to pretend that it's the beginning of the season, and I'm going to do a first round mock draft. Knowing everything we know now, I'll figure out injuries and that stuff later, but that's going to be a good vid. Make sure, you know, if you like that idea, go thumbs up the video, put a comment down below, and let me know if you actually want to see that. I kind of want to do that with a collab with somebody, too. I feel like I should get someone else on there to go back and forth with the picks. Maybe I'll take, like, one, then the other person will take two. I'll take three. We'll go back and forth. Who do you guys want to see? You know what we should do? I'm going to start DMing people that I want on Twitter. Let me know who do you want to see that I can collab with. Listen, if enough people, if enough of you guys go on Twitter, for all y'all following me on Twitter, and you have someone on there that you want me to collab with, go on Twitter, go mention them, and be like, yo, at whoever, you know, whatever fantasy guy you want on, and then tag me and be like, yo, come on, Nick underscore BDGE's YouTube channel, and do uh, and, and do the mock draft with them or whatever. Just say some shit and at me, and if enough people get in that person's notifications, they got to see it, right? Then they're going to check out the channel and be like, let's put the boy on. All right. Side note, anyways, um, where even was I? Yeah, so Bell would be number one. The Seattle backfield at this point, you're avoiding everyone. CJ Prosex finally got back, twisted his ankle again. We knew the injuries were going to be a concern. Still there, no one is producing. I mean, from the eye test, Rawls looked about a thousand times better than Eddie Lacy. He's just not going to get the um, opportunity there. They're just not going to feed him 20 carries a game and let him catch passes there. So there's no one in that backfield that you need to own. And who else do we got here? I mean, this is just... I, like, I want to play a game called, or make a section called, y'all remember when. Y'all remember when Cam Newton was a thing? Wayne Gallman was a thing? Orleans Darqua was a thing? You see that poster? That's a go poster right there. Derrick Henry was a thing. Who else? Matt Breida was a thing. Cam, Cam Newton, six turnovers in his last two games, five interceptions, one fumble lost. You know, he had that big stretch those two games against New England and Detroit where he just lit it up but he's been awful outside of that he's been really bad over the last two weeks especially yesterday and uh, you know he goes to Tampa Bay like I, you're probably gonna have to start him if he's your quarterback but like I ain't gonna be happy about it Wayne Gallman Orleans Darkwa I'll get to that in a second I think Derek Henry like DeMarco outsnapped him 43 to 30 out touched him 21 to 15 um, again, I do that running back murky breakdown, which will come out Tuesday, which I do the snap percentages of each backfield and touches and stuff like that. So make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter. I'm, I'm definitely in the minority. I might be the only person. I don't even know if I truly believe this, but is it possible? Is it possible just maybe that Derrick Henry is not like the best thing ever? He's not like the next elite running back. Is it possible? Like, all we do is hype this guy up and he's had plenty of bad games and bad production and they just don't like the titans are so high on him why not use him more than demarco murray demarco murray showed no explosion this year outside of that one big run that's the same thing with derrick henry he's averaging like 4.4 yards a carry but if you take away that garbage time 70 yard touchdown run he had last week i think his yards per carry comes down to i think i calculated it out yeah he's at 3.5 yards per carry like yeah you know he's a great back in the nfl right like he puts fucking fear in the defense. He's running over dudes. Like, he's a guy you want in your backfield. But I don't know if we're going to see him be like Leonard Fournette. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just saying, maybe it's a possibility. I want to throw it out there. So, like, see if anyone else is on the same page with me there. With Darkwa and Gallman, I've talked about it plenty of times. Like, there, you're just not going to get a clear picture of this backfield. And it's a bad team. Uh, Justin Pugh got hurt yesterday, and everyone thought, like, he saved their season by switching him to right tackle. It's a mess. You don't need to pay, you don't need to throw all your fab budget at a New York Giants running back every single week, whoever had the last big week, because it's not going to be the same guy the next week. Plus, it's probably not even, they're not even going to get production on a week-to-week -week basis. So, Darkwa is a hold. Gallman's probably droppable, but, like, it's just, like, something people need to slow their roll on. And that goes for a lot of different backfields, too. They have, like, the recency bias, where if someone goes off, you know, they think that that production and that type of usage is always going to carry over. You have to make sure that when you're doing this, it's like a predictive analysis. What's going to be the case going forward? And that's, you know, that's a mistake we see a lot in fantasy football. What else we got? Yeah, the only, I mean, the only piece of this Giants offense you want is Evan Ingram right now. He's, he's a must start, like top eight, maybe even top five tight end for the rest of the season. When I say ROS, by the way, I have a lot of people ask me about that on Twitter or even in the comments. ROS means rest of season. So if I'm like, if you're like Landry or Parker, and I say Landry ROS, or like Parker week eight, Landry ROS, that means like I would take Landry for the rest of the season. Season spelled S-Z-N, obviously. What else we got here? Like, I don't know what's happening with this Titans offense. I thought they were going to be like a, 
a dominant, dominant force. Obviously, I just talked about Derrick Henry. They scored 12 points in an overtime win against the Browns. Decker put up a dud. Shard goes three for 40 in a game. I, like Jabril Peppers and McCourty. McCourty is like the highest rated cornerback per PFF this year. Both of those guys were out. You figure Mariota, you figure Shard, you figure even Decker coming off his strongest game of uh, the year last week is going to pop. Just did not happen. And I really don't know. You know. I don't really have an explanation for it. I probably am going to go maybe rewatch the game on Game Pass and see if I can get in a breakdown of it. Um, but it was, yeah, it was, it was messy. Delaney, Delaney showed out a little bit. He went seven for 63. He should have had another touchdown too, but they under, Mariota underthrew him on a score. Uh, he did get hurt in overtime though. He rolled up his ankle. Uh, they have a week, the week eight bye, so he might be fine if they just rest him for two weeks. They do have a backup tight end who's getting a lot of hype recently. I actually picked them up in my E-Town Get Down League because I have Delaney Walker now. Got traded for him. Jonu Smith, I think that's how you say it, J-O-N-N-U Smith. Really, really, really athletic guy. Uh, good pass catcher, can really make plays down the field and stretch the seams. So if Delaney Walker is out, he's definitely a guy you want to have on your mind if you're a Delaney Walker owner, Jonu Smith. Um, speaking of other dud offenses, we have Green Bay. Hunley threw for 87 passing yards. He almost he almost had more rushing yards than passing yards. Martellus Bennett was the leading receiver there with 17 yards. Uh, Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones led the team with five targets. Cobb and Jordan Nelson both had four. It's just a serious downgrade to all these weapons going forward. We weren't really sure and I told a lot of people to start Jordy and Devonta. I thought Henley, Hunley was going to be a lot better than this, especially against the Saints defense. It's just a big downgrade uh, going forward here. And it's going to be hard to play them unless they're in a, I mean, they were in a plus matchup. So that's, it, you know, it's just a big downgrade to the weapons. What a, The positive here is obviously Aaron Jones, who took over. The, I mean, I, I basically been saying he's easily the best runner there and he's the best back in the backfield. And it's funny because when I did my Packers, I did it like coming into the season, on, you, on my YouTube channel, I did a, a, a fantasy football outlook for every single team, right? I did all 32 teams, like a 20-minute a long video, uh, breaking down basically every player on every team. And when I got to the running, the, the backfield in Green Bay, everyone at that point was like hyping up Jamal Williams as like the must-own handcuff. And in that video, I was like, yeah, I like Timon, obviously. They're saying all the right things. He's ready to go. He's going to be the clear-cut starter. But I was like, I think Aaron Jones is the guy that's much more capable of taking over that that work over Jamal Williams. You know, when I watched Jamal Williams' tape and like his highlights and things like that, he didn't look special to me whatsoever. And that's exactly what we saw happen this year. Oops, sorry, my battery died. Uh, so I was saying Aaron Jones. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like tooting my own horn, but I, I thought it was pretty obvious if you watched either of them play in college. And Jones was like the superior athlete, took over this backfield now, right? He went, I think, 17 for 130 or something like that. Uh, where, where are you? Yeah. 17 for 131, had a touchdown, caught three of five targets. Tom Montgomery only had four carries on the day for like six yards, one catch. So he's being phased out of that backfield while Aaron Jones is completely taking over. He could be a league winner. He's a legit RB1 going forward. He's, I think, a top four fantasy running back in two of the last three weeks. So this week seven and week five, week six, he had a, a, a low game. But if you're going to get those high upside weeks, man, he's, he's someone you have to plug into your lineup every single week. They get um, a bye in week eight, and then they get Detroit, Chicago, Baltimore. Nothing that scares me away from playing him. Um, who else are we talking about? A couple tight ends I was kind of putting on my radar. We have Tyler Croft and AJ Derby. These are both guys I think I had in my waiver wire sheet last week to pick up if you needed guys. And, you know, Derby has 65 receiving yards or more in two of his last three games. He's becoming a bigger piece of this offense. They had a lot of tight ends on the roster, and we weren't really sure who was going to emerge as the guy, and it looks like he's becoming like the pass catcher there. And now with you know Emmanuel Sanders banged up, we don't know when he's going to return. Um, Derby can continue to play a big piece of this offense going forward. He's something to keep an eye on in deeper leagues. Someone I like in like regular, even like 10-team leagues, is, is Tyler Croft. He found the end zone again. That makes it three times on the year. He's got three touchdowns. Only Zach Ertz, Mercedes Lewis, Gronk, and Cameron Brait have more touchdowns uh, for tight ends this year. And since Croft took over in week three as the Bengals starter, he's been tight end eight in uh, PPR and standard. So from week three to week seven, it's like five weeks, I think they had their bye week. Um, and that includes the bye week. So he, he's been tight end eight. So he's, he's pretty much a borderline tight end one for the rest of the season in 10-team leagues just because Dalton's lack of weapons, right? John Ross is just hurt can't get on the field. Eifert's obviously out for the year. So by default, you know, Dalton leans on the tight end. So Tyler Croft is definitely someone that if you're really hurting at tight end, I would almost, I mean, we'll have to see what happens with Jordan Reed tonight, but if Reed puts up another dud game or only plays like for 40 or 30% of the snaps, I would probably take Tyler Croft ROS 
over Jordan Reed. What else we got here? Uh, speaking of tight ends, Hunter Henry is just a, a savage, officially a savage. He's now ninth in receiving yards among tight ends with 300 yards, but he's the 17th most targeted tight end. That, my friends, is what you call efficiency and production. He's sitting at tight end seven right now in the year and half PPR. Um, over the last four weeks, he's been a top five tight end. His stat line over the last four weeks, 14 catches, 221 yards, two touchdowns. If you prorate that four weeks out to a full 16-game slate, you're getting 56 catches, 885 yards, eight touchdowns. And I can almost guarantee you that's the kind of production we are going to you know, expect. Or that, that's, that's probably the stat line we're going to see from him next year. And he's going to be a very, very highly... Uh, very hyped up guy next year in drafts. Like you could already tell, he was hyped up this year. But people, you know, Gates was still there. But this is multiple weeks in a row that he's firmly outsnapped Gate. Uh, Gates now it was closer in the first few weeks of the season. They were very close on the snap count, and over the last like three weeks in a row, he's just been outsnapping him by a by a lot. So he's clearly like the tight end there now. Um, he's seeing 24 percent of the red zone targets. They're using him down the field. They're using him in the end zone. Like Henry is, if he's someone you could buy low right now, I don't know if you can because he's coming off a lot of big games, but he could be a top five tight end for you for the rest of the season. So I would do that if you could. What else do we got? Uh, a couple injuries. I'm not going to get into injuries right now because I do that on my uh, Thursday videos. You know, uh, that's like the first thing I go over and their impact. So I'm not going to get into Palmer. Joe Thomas tore his triceps, man. I just want to say... Rip to the God, Joe Thomas. 10,363 consecutive snaps. That's absurd to do that on a football field. Like, not once did you come out and be like, I can't think. I can't see. I got a con He definitely probably like 45 concussions over that 10,000 snap streak. You had to have had like seven. Anyways, he's going to be out for the year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it had to be. Tore triceps. Um, it, it's just another hit to this terrible Browns offense already. I just wanted to, you know, take a second to acknowledge Joe Thomas and his greatness, his persistence, his drive. You know, if some of y'all had the drive, if I had the drive that Joe Thomas had, shit, I wouldn't be on YouTube. I probably, actually, I probably still would be here. I wouldn't be anywhere better. But, hey, salute to the god Joe Thomas. Another team that's not looking good on offense besides the Browns is the Broncos. They're looking awful, and I guess... The takeaway here is that you, they're not even a defense that you could play every week now. As good as they are and as great as the players that they have on their defense, the worst enemy for a fantasy defense is a bad offense because you just set up the other team so well. And it just the more, you know, they keep scoring points and it's going to hurt the defense. So um, Denver's a weekly streaming option now. They're not someone that you need to hold on to because that offense is just clearly, you know, the line's bad, the running game's not getting going, so... Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not loving Denver. Um, what else we got? Kamara and Ingram both eating. As I said last week, Ingram's clear rest of season RB1. I hope you bought him low when you could. Kamara's an RB2 with upside in PPR leagues. They're just using both backs like perfectly. And salute to the Saints, man. They are uh, they're getting it done right now. Drew Brees never getting too old for this league. Man, him and Brady, that's so crazy how old Brady is. Him and Brees. Like, there are kids in this league that are like 21 playing quarterback right now, and Brady's like fucking 48. Like, Zam. Zam with a capital Z. Anyways, uh, Adrian Peter. I, this Adrian Peterson game, honestly, I felt like it was kind of easy to see coming. The hype just got like weight. Like, I was on him last week. I, I told people to start him because I, I like, I saw a big game coming from him. Like, the revenge game. He was ready to go and like ready to, you know, pound the rock. But like, you couldn't possibly expect a kind of game like that again. Like, AP wasn't back in the RB1 conversation. He was someone that you were like debating putting in your RB2 or flex spot. And he disappointed. And a lot of that probably has to do with Carson Palmer getting hurt. But the offense just stopped moving. Um, he just, you know, he wasn't good. And I thought he'd be better because Andre Ellington was out. And, uh, that, yeah, that didn't happen. He caught, like, one of four of his targets, and he just it just wasn't good. So, AP's definitely a hold. They're still going to, you know, he's, they're still going to get, like, 15 carries a game. But uh, without Palmer, that offense is going to be really, really, really bad. And, uh, like I said, I'll get more into that in my Thursday weekly video. And I think the last thing I have on there was just, man, it was Ty God week. Tyrod Taylor. He was my, I started him in my E-Town get down league. He got me like 27 points. We play a pretty friendly QB point system, but you know, he, he tore it up 268 passing yards, a passing touchdown, 53 yards on the ground, most importantly. And he has that cake schedule. I told you, if you're an Aaron Rodgers owner and Tyrod was available on the wire last week, you should have, you should have scooped him because it's going to be good going forward, man. Ty God's looking good even without the weapon. So he's someone you could stream if he's still available. And uh, 
Honestly, that's really it. There was, I mean, there's probably other notes I could have looked at, but I just wanted to get something out to you guys because, you know, I was feeling good. I was feeling ready. I was feeling raw in the prime of my life. I'm a, I got to put MGMT on my uh, Spotify playlist. I forgot about that. Anyways, that's going to be the video. If you enjoyed, please give it that thumbs up. Make sure you're following me on the Twitter and go tweet at some people who you want uh, me to collab with for the next week's mock draft video, if you want to see. So leave a comment below if you want to see that. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Thumbs up, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see y'all on Thursday. Make some money, find some models for a